World of Warcraft is a huge world to explore, and as a new player it can be so confusing how to get around, especially when there's so many different forms of travel, whether that be portals, boats, zeppelins, hearthstones, flight paths, or flying mounts. There's just so many places to go and the world just keeps getting bigger, as over the years when new expansions come out they add new zones, continents, and worlds, which just means even more portals and routes for boats to take. I want to help you understand all the different ways to travel, show you exactly where to find all these travel points and where they take you. I'm going to be doing my best to section this video by faction, so I'll be starting with the alliance and we'll cover things like portal rooms and boats, then we'll do the same for the horde, afterwards I'll move into topics such as flight paths, hearthstones, and other miscellaneous travel, so feel free to use the timestamps if there's something specific you want to know about, and let's get into it. Starting off with the Alliance, I am currently in Stormwind, which is the main capital city hub for the Alliance. So the first thing that I want to address is when you open the map, it actually shows these icons marked here where all the different travel points are. So right off the bat, if you're just ever unsure where to find it, it's easily marked on your map for you. The first one we're going to be taking a look at is, of course, the portal room, which is over in the mage quarter. It's this nice big tower, so nice and easy to see. So to get there, you just have to come to this little entrance if you don't have a flying mount yet you can just run up the ramp and jump through this little portal and once you've arrived in the portal room you have wings down to your left and your right with portals one on the right is kind of more like older content zones and the one on the left has a lot of the newer stuff for example battle for azeroth legion dragonflight shadowlands all that kind of stuff that's more recent we're going to start over on the right hand side the very first one that you'll come across is a portal to the jade forest this is from the mists of pandaria expansion so it's going to be the zone pandaria Daria. If we go to our map and just right click a few times to see the main Azeroth map, you can see Pandaria here. So the Jade Forest, and it's actually marked where that portal is. This one, as our first example, we're just going to go through so I can show you guys kind of how that works and how you can get back as well. And here we are in the Jade Forest, and there's conveniently a portal to get right back to Stormwind. So that's basically how portals work. Super easy. There isn't always a portal straight back to Stormwind, like right away when you go through. Sometimes it's a little bit off in a different location. And speaking of which, our next portal is to Shatrath, and this is from the Burning Crusade expansion. So this one we're going to right click a couple of times to zoom out on the world map as much as possible. We're currently in Azeroth and this portal is going to take us to Outland. And Shatrath City is in Terrakar Forest, we can see it right here. So this is exactly where it's going to take you and again it's going to show you where the portal back to Stormwind is. I'm going to take this one as well as another example. I won't do this for every single portal because that might take a while but I did just want to show you that the portal back is not right directly here. It's actually just over this way and there's a portal back to Stormwind and then also a portal back to Orgrimmar for the Horde because this is like a neutral city that both the Horde and the Alliance can come to and there is one other portal I want to mention while we're here just so that you know that it exists. There is a portal to the Isle of Queldonis. I'm not going to take it because there's not a portal back. It's a little bit more complicated but just to show you where that is it is all the way up at the very top of Eastern Kingdoms. So the next portal is a portal to Caverns of Time. This one is in Kalimdor so the other continent of Azeroth and it is all the way down in Tanneris. Right in here the Caverns of Time like a really fun place that has dungeons and raids that kind of explore like past things that have happened in World of Warcraft. Yeah, so that's a really, really fun spot. Or of course, again, just a great way to get down to the south area of Kalimdor. The next portal is to the Exodar, which is actually the home city of the Draenei. And that is also located in Kalimdor on Azur Mist Isle, somewhere in this area here. And there is also a portal to Darnassus here at the dock. The next portal is to Dalaran, Crystal Song Forest. Now, this one can get confusing sometimes. There's there's actually like two versions of Dalaran. This one, Crystal Song Forest, is from the Wrath of the Lich King expansion and it's in the zone Northrend and it's over in Crystal Song Forest right here. But the reason why I'm mentioning it is because there's another version of Dalaran that sometimes can get confusing for people on the Broken Isles, and the Broken Isles is from the Legion expansion, which is a lot more of a kind of recent expansion, and Dalaran is also here. So that was all the portals that are on the right-hand side, and now let's head over to the other wing over here. We have a portal to Azuna. This one is to the Broken Isles, which is the Legion expansion that 
that I was mentioning with Dollarin, but the portal is to Azuna. This is definitely a portal I use if my Dollarin Hearthstone is ever on cooldown if I need to get to Dollarin, or just for whatever other reason you need to come to the Broken Isles. The next portal that we have is the Oribos portal, and this is for the Shadowlands expansion, which is also called the Shadowlands in the Zone. So this is like another whole world that you can go to. So it's going to bring you to Oribos. I will mention if it's ever your first time going to Oribos, like if you're questing there for the first time, the portals won't be established right away. You'll arrive in Oribos for the first time and you have to do a couple intro quests. I think they have you come in and talk to a few NPCs and then they set up the portals shortly after. Next portal that we have is a portal to Boralus. This is from the Battle for Azeroth expansion and it's going to take you to Cool Tiris and to Tiragard Sound here we have Boralus up in this area and you can see that there's this boat back to Stormwind and there's also a portal here too. I don't know why it's not marked but there's like boats and portals there as well and I'm also going to go through this Boralus portal because there's actually another portal room over here too with some key spots that you might want to know about. So in here there is four portals. We have a portal to Ironforge which is super nice because there's not a portal to Ironforge in Stormwind so if you ever need to get there that's a super quick way to just go from Stormwind to here to Ironforge within like five seconds. The next portal is a portal to the Exodar which is one that Stormwind already has and the Exodar is that Draenei zone that I was telling you about in Azura Mist Isle. This next portal is a portal to Silithus. This one had to do with some stuff that happened in the Battle for Azeroth expansion. Silithus is right here, kind of in the southern area of Kalimdor, and it'll take you right here, and you can see that there's of course a portal right back to Tiragard Sound. And then I actually believe there's another portal that you can open up. You would just have to do some quests in the Battle for Azeroth expansion, which is Cool Tiris in this case, and you can open up a portal to Najatar as well, kind of like an underwater zone that came out in Battle for Azeroth 2. I don't have that unlocked right now, but that is another thing that would be in this portal room. I think it would probably open up right here. You can see that there's kind of like an empty spot right here. The next portal we have is for the Dragonflight expansion. So this is the most recent, the current expansion as of right now. So this takes you to Valdraken, which is the main city in the Dragon Isles here. So that is right here in Thaldrassus, and we have this big Valdraken city, and of course there's portals back as well. If you don't have some of these portals unlocked, sometimes they're not open until you've gone for the first time. So if you're brand new and if you haven't gone to the Dragonflight zones yet, this might not be open for you. So if that ever happens to you with like something not being unlocked yet, it's usually because you just have to do a few intro quests to get that established. And of course, because it's the current expansion, it's made to level from level 60 to 70. So if you're not level 60 yet, they obviously don't really want you to go there so you'll have to be a higher level to go to those places. And the very last portal we have in the portal room is to Stormshield Ashran. This is from the Draenor expansion which again is a whole nother world Draenor right here and right over here is Ashran and this is the alliance area of Ashran which is Stormshield. All right so that is everything for the portal room and we're gonna run on down the little spiral staircase again and there's one more thing that I want to show you. There's actually an NPC right here he's called the honor hold mage and if you what speak to I him he has an option to report to the dark portal. This one can be a little confusing there's actually Actually, like two different versions of the dark portal if we take a look at this zone the blasted lands you can see right here there is the dark portal back in the day the first time that the dark portal was a thing it would take you to outlands and it would bring you to this side of the dark portal in hellfire peninsula in outland then the warlords of draenor expansion came out and draenor is essentially a alternate timeline of outland so it's like a past version of outland so there's also a dark portal to Draenor as well. The thing that can get a little bit confusing is depending on which version you are zoned into, the dark portal will either take you to Outland or Draenor. So I want to show you how to switch that. So right you now, if I something? click on, I must report to the dark portal, he's going to teleport me to the Blasted Lands. 
and when we look at the portal we see that it's red this means that this is the warlords of draenor portal the portal to outland would be a green portal and the stuff going on would be a little bit different like all of this stuff isn't here but i want to show you how you can switch it in case you're trying to go through to outland and you're a little confused on how to get there so you're gonna have to fly all the way over to this little mark spot on the map there's an npc named zadormi she's in a few different zones because there's a couple zones over the years where there's like two timelines to pick from like either the present or the past so because warlords of draenor is more recent of an expansion it's technically what we would consider the present time and burning crusade is much older so when we talk to zadormi she's gonna show us the past essentially which will then make the portal function again Greetings. as it did back in the day Light so that's you. what you'll have to do and this is what i also meant about how things look a little bit different so that's a good giveaway on which version you're in and again the red or the green portal there is also a portal back to stormwind here and then a portal to orgrimmar for the horde as well so we are finally done checking out the main portal room here in stormwind and the next spot i want to show you is another area that has a bunch of portals and then afterwards we'll go to the docks to check out the boats so i'm just going to fly over from the mage quarter up to this little island here and we'll check them out so here we are this is another little portal hub area this came out in the cataclysm expansion and it's all portals to more zones that came out in the cataclysm expansion i will mention again if you can't go through any of these portals for example this one i can't click on it it's because i have to do some intro quests to this zone to kind of establish the portal so that's why if it's ever not working but other than that i'm going to try to go over these pretty quickly just to knock them out the first portal is to twilight highlands which is located right here in the eastern kingdoms the next portal is to mount hyjal and that is in kalimdor right here and then we have a portal to oldham which is also in kalimdor towards the south here right at the very bottom then we have a portal to deep Holm. this one's kind of fun and interesting it's actually here in the maelstrom and right here is deep Holm. it's kind of like an underwater slash like under the earth zone very interesting this one is a portal to vashjir this one is truly an underwater zone very very cool it's located right over here honestly i have to say this is one of the coolest zones in world of warcraft where you literally quest underwater if you've never been to vashjir i would highly recommend it then there's also this portal to tolbarad i like never go here i think it was like a pvp thing back in cataclysm um and it's just right above vashjir but but I have never really gone there before, but just mentioning that it is there. So that's everything in terms of cataclysm portals. And now we're going to head over to the docks to check out everything in terms of boats. Here is the Stormwind docks area. Right now, a boat is actually arriving. And altogether, there are three boats that will dock here. The one that just showed up is a boat to Valiant's Keep Bereen Tundra. So Bereen Tundra is in Northrend right here, and you can see this is where the boat will dock. Boats are pretty quick. They arrive every like couple minutes roughly. So this one just showed up and it'll probably leave within the next like 30 seconds or so. I guess as an example, I'll show you exactly how the boat works because it'll kind of like go for a little bit and then there will be a loading screen and then we'll essentially like teleport into where we're going. All right, so we are off from the docks. And then there's our little loading screen, just kind of shows on the map where we're going exactly. And now we are here in Boreen Tundra. This zone is honestly so pretty. Uh, Northrend is very like wintry, so obviously this is where you would usually get off the boat because we've arrived, but I'm gonna take it back to Stormwind so we can keep going over the docks and the boats. Now we're gonna go to the other side. This dock is a little bit confusing. As you can see, there's actually two boats marked on this spot, so I kind of learned the hard way. I earlier was trying to get on a boat to show you guys that we were going to Boralis, but it actually took me to the Dragon Isles. So the boat that just left, what I discovered is that 
it's going to Boralus and it's going to the left and the one that goes to the Dragon Isles goes to the right. This one yeah, is the forest. one that talks about the boat that's going to go to Cool Tiris, which is the Boralus one. This one was one that we talked about. There was a portal in the portal room to get there too, but there's also a boat. So it's in the Battle for Azeroth zone and it will dock right here in Boralus. So if you want to go to that one, it's the boat that's going to arrive from this side and then take off to the left. And if you're looking to go to the Dragon Isles, this I'll NPC, you. you can actually talk to it and find out and when it will be showing up. And it has a little strength. estimated time until arrival. You can sometimes also tell what boat it is based on like the NPCs that are on it. As you can see, there's like Drakthir dragon characters. Dragon and this guy's yelling out, we set sail for the Dragon Isles. So there, there's a few clues as to which boat and where it's going. So aside from the boats that come here, there's also a portal to Darnassus. And Darnassus is the night elf city and it is in Kalimdor right here. So let's go through the portal to Darnassus so I can kind of show you the little dock system that's set up here. So when we come through, we actually show up in this little Rutheran village area. And there's kind of a few things that go on here. Let's start with when we first come through, we end up on this dock and there's actually a portal to the Exodar. So let's click that one just to kind of show you the little portal network that's going on here. So this is where I believe that the Exodar portal from Stormwind would take you. So it takes you kind of like outside of the Exodar and that's the city in there in that big uh, crystal area right here. That's what I was talking about where you can kind of go back and forth between like the Night Elf area and the Draenei zone. So there's actually a few things here that I wanted to show you guys. If you're looking to actually go into Darnassus, which is the Night Elf city, you just go through this little portal thing. It's been around since like classic time. So that's super old little portal between Darnassus and Rutheran village. And there is something else I want to show you guys in here. There's a couple more little kind of portal things going on. I actually didn't even know about this until yesterday, but in here there's actually another portal to Exodar and there's also a portal to Hellfire Peninsula, which is that dark portal stuff I was telling you guys about earlier. So now we're just going to head back out to Rutheran Village. There's just like one more thing that I want to show you guys. Actually, I guess there's two things I want to mention. One, uh, this dock has a boat at it and it actually doesn't even go anywhere. I tried standing on it for a while yesterday and this is just here. It doesn't actually go. Back in the day, like I think before Cataclysm, there was a boat that went between Rutheran Village over to Darkshore as a way to kind of get across over to, this is like the next Night Elf questing area after you finish in Teldrassil, you go to Darkshore. But ever since Cataclysm, the docks over there got destroyed. So now if you want to go over there, you'd have to take a flight path. I'm gonna cover flight paths more later in the video, but I just wanted to mention that in case you're like, how do I get over to Darkshore? And then the final thing I wanna mention, this main kind of dock that just comes right down the middle, this is how you get back to Stormwind. So it's a little interesting because when you take the portal here, it brings you over to that dock across the way. So if you wanna come back to Stormwind, just run over to this other dock and it'll take you back there. I think it brings you to the portal room, I believe, or maybe the dock. Okay, it brings you to the portal room. So luckily we had finished covering everything that there was to do with the docks and we're still not finished. There's a couple more things to go over for the Alliance. So this one is kind of unique to the Alliance, but over here in the Dwarven district, there's this thing called called the Deep Run Tram. I think that this is so cool. This has been around since classic World of Warcraft and this was a really popular way to travel between Stormwind and Ironforge. We're just gonna run through this little tunnel and there's this little instance portal that takes you into the Deep Run Tram, which is essentially like a subway, so like an underground train thing. I'm probably gonna miss this one. Can I make it? Can I make it? Oh, they're too, <laughs> they're too quick. Okay, so there's actually two sets of these that that go by so they just kind of show up every like minute or so maybe less basically we're starting like right here in the dwarven district and it's going to take us across the water here over into dunmoreau to ironforge and it's really cool because when you like cross the water it shows like this underground underwater thing i really love it i did want to mention you can technically just run down this path and like you can do that it would obviously take a long time
time, but it is possible and it's sometimes fun to do just for the sake of saying that you've done it. I would say that using the deep run tram isn't as common practice in retail wow, considering that there's just like faster ways to travel now, but back in the day there wasn't really easier ways or like free portals to take you'd have to actually like pay a mage to teleport you to iron forge or just any other city but it's still fun and a good way to know about this was the little underwater spot i just think it's really neat and we are arriving now and we just have to go across over to this portal spot and we just come through to the other side and then we'll be in iron forge so iron forge is the city of the dwarves also the gnomes kind of hang out here too because they don't really have like a proper city either but while we're here in iron forge this is actually perfect because it segues into the next area that we're heading to and now we're a little bit closer to get there quicker so the next spot i want to take us to is wetlands uh, in menethil harbor here there's another boat dock area with some more spots that we can go to can so do? we're going to talk to the flight path guy and just fly over to Menethil Harbor and I'll meet you guys there and we'll explore what boats are there. So we just landed in Menethil Harbor. This place is a little weird. It got flooded ever since the Cataclysm expansion and they haven't fixed it or changed it since then which is really sad because Menethil Harbor back in the day was always like a main spot to like use boats and everything and i just think it's really sad to see it all flooded like this there are two boats that come here the one that just left was going to theramore isle which is over in kalimdor in Dustwallow Marsh, where are we at? Right here, uh, Dustwallow Marsh, and it is gonna dock right here at Theramore Isle. And then over this way, we have a boat that will go to Northrend. This one's going to Howling Fjord. So earlier when we were at the Stormwind docks, there was a boat that went to Bereen Tundra, and this boat goes to Howling Fjord. So there's kind of like the two different ends of Northrend that you can go to and this boat right here that's where it goes this boat is actually so pretty it comes through this little area here and it's just such a scenic route i would highly recommend checking it out that's where the two boats go and i'm actually gonna wait for the boat to theramore to come back because the next one i want to show you is over in ratchet we're gonna take the boat to get to Dustwallow marsh and then i'm gonna fly over to the barrens so that we can go to ratchet because there's another boat that i want to show you guys and we're almost done and then we'll be switching over to the horde so we are in theramore isle now and i'm going to be taking the flight path That's over to the barrens so i can show you the boat that is in ratchet next I'm also hoping that just naturally kind of following me around going through portals and taking boats and flight paths and then another boat and another flight path can kind of help you to understand how all the travel systems kind of work and how you can kind of quickly get places. We just arrived in Ratchet now and this spot is actually like a horde and an alliance boat, like a neutral one that both of them can use. This boat will take us to Booty Bay, Stranglethorn Vale, kind of a funny name, it's going to take us from here all the way over to Eastern Kingdoms at the very bottom of the map, Stranglethorn Vale, we have this Booty Bay location here. So I'm not actually gonna take this boat so I don't need to like wait for it or anything, but that is everything I believe I wanted to cover for the Alliance. And of course that one's kind of an overlapping one between Horde and Alliance. And we are now going to switch over to a Horde character and start to go over all the Horde things, their portal rooms and how they use Zeppelin instead of boats which are essentially like flying boats so you guys will see what I mean. So we are on a horrid character now in the capital city of Orgrimmar. Of course some of this is going to be kind of similar to Stormwind for the Alliance but just the horrid version of that. So the first thing that we're going to start out with is the portal room which we have marked here on the map. So for the horrid it is out near the gates of Orgrimmar and the portal room is a little bit different aesthetically and in terms of how it's set up for the alliance they had like a wing down to the left and the right and the horde actually has kind of like an upstairs and downstairs so this is the main section if you just run straight in from the door and theirs is kind of like a circle which is kind of cool this room i would say has all of like the main stuff in it there's a mix of kind of older content expansions and newer stuff as well i'm just gonna try to go over these pretty quickly because for the most part we covered a lot of stuff during the alliance section 
Mansion. This is the portal to Dalaran Crystal Song Forest, which is that Northrend version of Dalaran in Crystal Song Forest here. And next beside that one, we have a portal to the Jade Forest, which is from the Mists of Pandaria expansion. The only thing that is different is for the Alliance, their portal took them, I think, to Pawdon Village, but for the Horde, it's up in Honeydew Village. The next portal is to Zuldazar, which is from the Battle for Azeroth expansion. For the Alliance, Cool Tiris is the Alliance Battle for Azeroth area, and Zandalar is for the Horde. This portal will take you to the city Dazaralur, and I'm going to go through it because this is similar to the Alliance's uh, Boralus portal room area, so the Horde has like their own version of that. I don't really recall the portal taking you down to the docks. I don't know if that's new or if I haven't done something. I thought that it was supposed to bring you right into the portal room, but for some reason it didn't, so I'm flying over there now. So if that happens to you, you just have to make your way all the way to the top of the tower, kind of at like this back section here, and the portal room is right in this main door here. And then from here, we're going to turn left of the innkeeper and run in here. And this is where the little portal area is. So this room has a couple of portals. The first one is a portal to Silvermoon City, which is the Blood Elf capital city. If we right click a few times and get to Eastern Kingdoms, it's right here in Eversong Woods, Silvermoon City. The next portal is back to Orgrimmar. Then there's one to Thunderbluff. Thunderbluff is like the Torin city, and it's actually kind of nearby to Orgrimmar. It is in Kalimdor and it's in Mulgor and Thunderbluff is here. And similar to the Alliance Boralus portal room, we also have a portal to Silithus, which is all the way at the very bottom southern end of Kalimdor, right here. And on this character, because I've actually played a decent amount of Battle for Azeroth, I have the portal to Najatar unlocked, which on my Alliance character I didn't have that yet, but that's the one that I was telling you guys about. If we click on either Kul Tiris or Zandalar, when you're looking at the map, you'll see up in the right corner Najatar is a zone, so that's just another battle for Azeroth zone. So of course I'm going to take the portal back to Orgrimmar to keep going over the other portals. The next portal is a portal to Azuna. This is the same as the Alliance. This is how you get to the zone, the Broken Isles, which is the Legion expansion, and it'll take you to Azuna. The next portal is to Oribos, which is that Shadowland zone that I was telling you guys about. That's one where it's like its own world, where you have to zoom out all the way to see all these different worlds, and Shadowlands is its own thing, and it'll take you to Oribos. And next is the portal to Valdraken, which is the Dragonflight Zone, the current expansion that's out for World of Warcraft, and it is over here in the Dragon Isles. And finally, the last portal up here is a portal to Silvermoon, which is the Blood Elf City I was just mentioning a little bit ago. Now that we've checked out this main upstairs area of the Horde portal room, we're going to go down stairs. There's a few more portals that I guess are just kind of more like ones that you wouldn't go to as often per se. The first one is to Shatrath, which is from the Burning Crusade expansion, and it will take you to Outland, Terracar Forest, Shatrath City. And then the next portal is to the Caverns of Time, and that is all the way at the very southern area of Kalimdor in Tanneris, Caverns of Time. And the last portal is to Warspear Ashran, which is from the Warlords of Draenor expansion, which is in Draenor, and it's right here, Ashran for the Horde, Warspear. That's everything for portals down here, but I did want to show you there's this NPC here named the Thralmar Mage, Watch and you me. can talk to him and you can report to the Dark Portal. That's everything that I talked about for the Alliance version, which was the Honor Hold Mage, where it'll take you to the Dark Portal, and it will either be the Draenor version or the Out land version depending on what you have it set to. That is everything for all of the portals. I'm sure you guys can see a lot of similar portals. I mean the Alliance also has one to Caverns of Time, to Shatrath, and to Ashran. It's pretty much all the exact same thing so everyone can get mostly to the same spots. The only ones that are kind of like different would be for example this portal to Silvermoon City. Obviously the Alliance can't go into a Horde Blood Elf City but for the Alliance they had a portal to Exodar and of course the Horde can't go to an Alliance city so there's some things where it's a little different but other than that it's mostly very similar stuff. Dragon Isles, Shadowlands, uh, Azuna on the Broken Isles, uh, Pandaria, and Dalaran. There's a lot of very similar stuff. 
Now that we've taken a look at the portal room, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at zeppelins. The main area for zeppelins is in the middle of Orgrimmar, but there's actually a zeppelin outside of Orgrimmar, so I'm going to go over there first because it's kind of one that I can just knock out of the way real quick while we're over here, and it's actually arriving right now. So this is the zeppelin to get to the Dragon Isles, so this is like the boat version of getting to the Dragon Isles right out front Orgrimmar. Other than that, we're going to head back to this main kind of hub where all the zeppelins are there's actually a few of them showing up right now so again this is very similar to the alliance how they have their docks and their boats just think of these as the horror docks and boats so the first one that's actually here right now is a zeppelin that will take you to stranglethorn vale if you look at this npc you can see in the bottom uh, right hand corner here it says stranglethorn vale zeppelin master um, you can kind of talk to them and they'll kind of mention like hey this is where we're going Going in case you weren't sure and actually we're gonna go ahead and get on this zeppelin because I want to show you some other places where it can take you but it is basically gonna take us all the way over to Eastern Kingdoms and Stranglethorn Vale is at the very bottom of the map here it's gonna take us right over here in Stranglethorn Vale uh, you can always feel free to just mount up and jump off whenever you'd like of course if you got back on the zeppelin it would take you back to Orgrimmar but I just wanted to show you over here there's a portal to it says the runes of Lordaeron but it's basically to the the Undercity, which is all the way in the northern area of Eastern Kingdoms in Tirisfall Glades. So that would take you out here. There's like another little Zeppelin hub area. I'm going to go back to Orgrimmar because I want to kind of show you guys from like the main Orgrimmar city hub how to get around, but just wanted to show you that this area existed while the Zeppelin was available to take. So we just arrived back in Orgrimmar and the next one I want to show you guys is the portal to Ruins of Lordaeron. We're going to take the portal through because this one is a little bit interesting. It's another one of those zones that has a past and a present timeline. I am in the present. This is where it's essentially been destroyed. This zone, it's had a bunch of blight, basically green poison toxic stuff has gone through here. When you take the portal, it'll bring you to this area that has a portal to Stranglethorn Vale, which is where we just were, and that's how it had a portal to here as well, so kind of the back and forth real easy. And then the next portal is one right back to Orgrimmar and then this last portal is to Howling Fjord which is in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion in Northrend and right here Howling Fjord. The last thing that's here that's kind of interesting is this orb of translocation which is essentially like a portal it's just a little bit different and this one when you click it it will teleport you to Silvermoon City which is the Blood Elf City. So that's everything that's here in this little portal room area but I did want to show you guys how to switch to the past version of Tears Fall Glades. As you can see, it's completely like destroyed out here. Zadormi is right here. She's kind of glowing. She's not actually marked on the actual map, but you'll be able to see her on the mini map. I'm gonna speak to her and ask her to show us what Tears Fall Glades looked like before the battle for Lordaeron. Usually there's zeppelins out front, but they are definitely not there right now. But if you want to see it as it used to be and kind of use like the zeppelins, that's how you do it. So now it's back to normal. So the thing that's interesting, it's actually not technically zeppelins right now. There used to be zeppelins that come here but they changed it and it's all like blocked off right now and instead they're just using portals so it still takes you to the same places that the zeppelins would but now it's just a little bit quicker and easier you don't have to wait for the zeppelins basically this is all the same portals that we just looked at when we were over in the ruins of Lordaeron in that like kind of city area so there's a portal to Stranglethorn Vale and then the next one is a portal to Orgrimmar and then over on this other side here there is a portal to Howling Fjord. So it's all the same stuff. So whether you're in the past or the present version, you're able to get to either one. And then I just wanted to show you how over here, the stuff is like gone, like the portals aren't here because they're actually outside where the zeppelins used to be, but we do still have the orb of translocation here. And then also while we're here, I wanted to show you how to actually get into the Undercity in case you've never gone. It's kind of, I wouldn't really say it's like a maze, but if you don't know how to get there, you probably will be a little confused. So you just run into the runes of Lordaeron, past the throne room, 
and then you kind of come down to this middle area. It kind of comes in from like both sides, so either way that you go, and you basically just want to look for these Undercity guards and this like elevator door. When we were in the present time before we switched to the past, the elevators don't function at all, but because we're back in the past, it'll work all the same. And also there's one thing I want to show you. There's a portal in here. In the magic quarter, it says that there's a portal to Hellfire Peninsula, so we're going to go over there real quick. This portal is kind of similar to how I showed you in Darnassus, the Night Elf City. They had a portal to Hellfire Peninsula. So now that we're all the way down here, I'm going to use my Hearthstone to get me back to Orgrimmar. I'm going to be covering hearthstones a little bit more in another section later on in the video, but for now I don't want to run all the way back out to the portal, so I'm just going to hearth to Orgrimmar. Now we're going to go over to this side, which we have two more zeppelins that will arrive here. These ones are actual zeppelins, no portals or anything. This dock is to Bereen Tundra, which is in Northrend, a Wrath of the Lich King expansion thing. And then on this side, there is a zeppelin to Thunderbluff, which is the Torin city, obviously a horde city. It's pretty close to Orgrimmar. We're right here in Orgrimmar. And Thunderbluff is in Mulgore, right here. So that's everything in terms of zeppelins. Zeppelins. The next spot we're going to go over to is the area that has the Cataclysm portals. Again, the Alliance has this as well, so I'll just go over them super quickly. We have a portal to the Twilight Highlands, which is in the Eastern Kingdoms right over here. Next, we have a portal to Oldham, which is here in Kalimdor at the very bottom of the zone. Next, a portal to Vashir, which is that underwater zone over by Eastern Kingdoms. And then there's our portal to Deepholm, which is in the Maelstrom, kind of in the middle of the map. And finally, a portal to Mount Hyjal, which is also pretty close to us right here. Moving into a whole different type of travel, we're now going to talk about flight paths. The easiest way to explain it, I think, is right now I am at an NPC that is a flight path master. You can speak to these. These are all around Azeroth on every continent and every world. And they're basically points that you can discover on your map. As an example, when I speak to the flight Light path master there's all these different points that i can go to you can even see there's these little dots in between those are flight paths that i haven't actually discovered yet which means i can't land there but i am going to be kind of flying through those points in order to get to the end route and you might be wondering how do you learn flight paths what is that all about so let me show you how you would do that i'm just gonna go seek one out real quick so here's actually a perfect example this is in westfall and as you can see this guy has a green exclamation point on top of his head and he is a flight path master if i speak to him it will say that i have discovered a new location and now when i speak to him you can see that I now have discovered this flight path point and it's been added to all the other ones that I know anytime as you're questing and running around the world if you see a green exclamation point usually they're in like towns or cities definitely talk to them so you can discover it and grow the amount of routes that you know so you have more places that you can fly to and just for the sake of showing you kind of how it works let's just take a flight path back to Stormwind you literally just click on where you want to go it takes a really small fee it used to be more expensive expensive back in the day like on classic wow now it's like a super super tiny fee and you just fly no hands it's just on an automated route so now of course you're welcome to discover flight paths the old school way where you just run around and eventually find the npcs that have new flight paths for you to discover but there is also an easier way that they added i believe it was back in cataclysm and there's items that you can collect that will allow you to discover all of the flight paths i already own these items items but if you haven't bought them before you'll have to go and get them and I'll show you guys exactly where you can buy them. To show you a visual of how that would work right now you can see I have a few flight paths but I'm definitely missing a few like there's some zones that are kind of empty and I don't have them. I haven't used this item yet on this character because you have to use it per character but when you buy the item it's like account wide so you can use it on every future character. It gives you most of the main ones so you should be able to fly kind of like everywhere within the zone. As you can see I just got a bunch of explore all these places because it filled out the map for me and now when I speak to him there is a lot more 
flight paths everywhere. The only spots where there isn't is horde zones. Like I'm on an alliance character, so I obviously can't fly to the horde zones. That is the toy for Eastern Kingdoms, but then there's another one, which is for discovering all of them on Kalimdor. So these are the two for the alliance, and then there's the horde version of Eastern Kingdoms in Kalimdor. So let me show you where you can buy these items if you're interested. For the alliance here in Ironforge, there's this NPC named Krom Stoutarm. He is in the Hall of Explorers. Explorers sells a whole bunch of them. There's this one for Kalimdor and for Eastern Kingdoms, and then he has others for like different zones like Outland, Northrend, and Cataclysm. They cost 10,000 gold each, but once you buy it once, you have it forever on all of your characters. This is the Horde vendor. They are in the Undercity in the Rogue Quarter, located right here, and it's the exact same thing as the Alliance vendor, so they have all of your maps to learn all of the flight paths. The next topic I want to cover is mounts, and there's a few different speeds of mounts that you can get that unlock at level 10, 20, 30, and 40, and I just got onto a character that's level 9, about to hit level 10, just to show you what happens when you hit level 10 and you unlock mounts for the first time. So there it is, at level 10 we earn the achievement Giddy Up, which basically means you are now able to ride a mount. Now that I'm level 10, I'm able to open up my collections menu and go into the mount tab. As as you can see I have you know quite a few mounts if you're new you might not have any mounts to be honest but right now I'm able to get onto any of my mounts that I feel like I'll get on this one today I feel like it's kind of cool I usually just drive my mount down somewhere on my action bar so I can easily access it and now I'm able to run around on a mount this moves at 60% speed that you'll be able to run at on a mount until level 20 when it will increase to 100% this is definitely a newer thing on retail wow back in the day on classic you couldn't learn to ride a mount until level 40 and you had to pay a ton of gold for it but nowadays on wow you just automatically get it for free you don't even have to go talk to a trainer to learn it i did want to show you in case you're brand new and you don't even have a mount yet i wanted to show you how you can do that also usually like every city will have a spot to go and buy a mount for example the night elves they ride night sabers which is like tigers but for the humans they have horses dwarves have rams and so forth so you would just basically find a vendor that you're able to go and buy a mount from. So right over here in Darnassus in the Cimmerian Enclave, there's actually a riding trainer here. You already know it though because it just automatically gives it to you. Beside the trainer there is this vendor and she actually sells Nightsabers, as you can see I already know all of these but if you don't have a mount yet at all this is who you would talk to you would buy one and then it would basically go into your inventory and you would right click to learn it and then you would open it up in your collections menu in the mount tab and then you'd be able to ride your mount and if you're like brand new and say if you're on a different race like if you're playing a human or a dwarf or a horde character whatever you're playing on I would recommend just like googling like for example like human horse mount vendor wow or Blood Elf Mount Vendor, wow. And you'll be able to find pretty quickly where you have to go to buy one if you don't have a mount at all yet. Here's another one of my characters. She's level 36. At level 30, you learn how to ride a flying mount. So you're now able to get onto a mount as long as it's capable of flying. Not all mounts are flying mounts. Some of them are specifically ground mounts. With your flying mount, you are able to run on the ground at 100% speed or fly up to 280% speed. Beyond Beyond regular flying mounts, there is one quicker way to travel on a mount. This came out in Dragonflight, which is the most recent and current expansion, and it is called Dragon Riding, and you need specific Dragon Riding mounts to do this, so you'll have to go through Dragonflight content in order to unlock this. But if I get on to one of my Dragon Riding mounts, I think that these can go up to something ridiculous like 800% but you do have this kind of regeneration bar it's called vigor and that's how you're kind of able to use all of these different abilities that kind of make you either like go forward really quick or go up into the air and only when you're going at super high speeds like if you're descending downwards for example and glowing blue that's how it recharges they actually just recently made it to where you can use your dragon riding mount everywhere in the world. It used to only be usable in the Dragon Isles, which is the Dragonflight continent, so it's pretty cool that you can now fly around all of the world with your dragon riding mount. 
Moving into a whole nother topic of travel, we're going to cover hearthstones and I'm going to start with just the traditional hearthstone, but then I have two others to cover as well. So a hearthstone is an item that you can use. It's on a 30 minute cooldown. You can use to return to a home that you've set. If you speak to an innkeeper and ask to have your home set to there, uh, that's where your hearthstone will take you until you change it to somewhere else. I'm all the way down in Feralis and my hearthstone is set to Astronar, which is in Ashenvale. So it's going to take me right here if I use it. This is obviously much faster than having to use a flight path or manually flying there. And there we are. Now we're in Astronar. I also want to show you guys how innkeepers work. Right now you can see on my map there's this little mini hearthstone and the innkeeper is marked. So like I was saying any like town or city or most camps of any kind should have an innkeeper and you would basically just speak to them and say make this in your home and it's going to pop up with the thing being like are you sure you want to make this your home? This one one already is my home but it would work the same for anywhere in the world where you'd want to set your home. While we're still on this character I want to show you the next hearthstone which is the Dalaran hearthstone. They actually changed this. It used to be an item that you would keep in your backpack just like a standard hearthstone. But on this character I guess I actually still just have it in my bag. They actually changed it so instead of being able to use it from your backpack it's now a toy that's kept in your collections menu. Technically delete this because I already have learned to use the toy. What you do is you would go into your collections menu, into toy box, and then you can see I have my Dalaran Hearthstone. There's also a Garrison Hearthstone, and these two are something, if you're a new player, you don't just get these hearthstones, you have to unlock them. I of course already have them, so I'm going to go ahead and use my Dalaran Hearthstone to show you how it works and where it takes me, but then I'll let you know how you can unlock it if you don't have it yet. This Hearthstone takes you to Dalaran. Back in the beginning of my video when I was talking about how there's two different versions of Dalaran, there's one from Northrend, which is from the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, and then there's one in the Broken Isles, which is the Legion expansion, and that's what this Hearthstone is, so that's how you easily get to Dalaran in Legion. Also, while we're here in Dalaran, I wanted to show you where the portal is to get back to Stormwind for the Alliance and I'll show you Horde in a little bit too. So in Dalaran for the Alliance if you come to this area here right near this Greyfang Enclave and it has a big lion on the front of the window you can go in here and turn to your left and this is where the portal to Stormwind is. Now I want to show you how you can unlock the Dalaran Hearthstone if you haven't already. You go and speak to Chromie which allows you to switch timelines and I'm going to switch to the Legion timeline which is on the Broken Isles. Basically what that's going to do is give me an intro quest to start going to the Legion zone. For the Horde right now it wants me to go outside of Orgrimmar. I'm going to start this quest chain then we're going to turn in this quest and for me I'm pretty sure that you can only do this if you've done the Legion intro quest before. If you've never done it before you'll probably have to go through it which can probably take you know like maybe it's like a 30 minute quest line or so and at the end of it you'll get your Hearthstone I promise. I'm not going to do that though because for the video's sake I just want to show you the whole idea of like what it's like to get your hearthstone. Once you've finished the quest line or if you've done it before and if you skip ahead as soon as you get to Dalaran you'll be able to talk to this mage. He's gonna give you your Dalaran hearthstone and that's how you get it. So again I already know it. I can't learn it again. It's already in my toy box. And also while we're here in Dalaran on a horde character I wanted to show you where the portal is for the horde. So it's just down in this area in Windrunner's Sanctuary and you just go down this little little path thing here and then turn to the left and this is where you'll find the portal back to Orgrimmar. Now I'm going to show you how to unlock your garrison hearthstone which is the one that will bring you to Draenor. So we're going to talk to Chromie and change to the timeline for Warlords of Draenor which is right here. So we're going to click on Draenor and then that will give you the intro quest to start going to Draenor and you're basically just going to want to follow that quest line. Eventually for the alliance you'll make your way to Shadow Moon Valley and you'll establish your garrison here and once you've established your garrison then you'll be able to have your garrison hearthstone and then for the horde it's kind of similar you'll do a quest line kind of starting at the dark portal here and then
then you'll make your way to Frostfire Ridge and establish your garrison. I believe it's right here in this area. Something that you have to do per character to unlock it. Like there is no like skipping ahead. It's like a whole thing to kind of unlock it. Just for the sake of demonstrating what the garrison looks like, I got onto an alliance character that I do have my garrison unlocked on so I can use the Hearthstone. There is your garrison. This is what it'll look like for everyone. There's like a few customizations you can do to your garrison in terms of what buildings you have in your garrison. Not only for the sake of traveling to get to Draenor, it's also just kind of cool to have this unlocked. And of course, let me show you the Horde garrison as well. Here it is. So definitely two very different aesthetics. This one's very Horde themed and the other one very Alliance themed. The next topic of travel that I want to cover is mage teleports and portals. So if you play a mage, you're actually able to teleport yourself to a bunch of major cities. Most of these will unlock at level 21 and you'll be able to teleport to a ton of cities. So it's kind of like having the portal room in your pocket and you can use it at any time. You just pick the city that you want to teleport to and you'll just have a quick little cast timer and then in an instant you will be teleported to that city. So that's teleporting and now portals is kind of the same idea. You have portals to all of the same places that you can teleport to, but portals are something that your group members or raid members can also use use. So for an example, let's create a portal to Orgrimmar. Anyone can use this as long as they're in your group. If they're not in your group, they won't be able to click it. Portals will last for about a minute before they'll fade away, so hopefully all of your group members will take it before it's too late. And also, it's pretty common to hire a mage to portal you somewhere. For example, you could go into trade chat and say, looking for mage to portal me to Ouroboros in the Shadowlands, and sometimes people will tip you so you can actually make some money off of creating portals for other players. So we just covered mages and how they can teleport and create portals, but there's actually another class that kind of has their own portal network as well, but it does need to be unlocked as an ability. So I got onto one of my alts and got her leveled up to level 22 when you unlock the teleport to Moonglade ability. This is something druids have had since classic and it teleports them to Moonglade, which is a really important druid area in Azeroth. Ever since the Legion expansion, they added something called Dreamwalk, which brings you to a place where there's multiple portals so that you can go to more than just Moonglade. I just wanted to show you guys that this is where you come baseline at level 22 when you get the teleport to Moonglade ability. And Moonglade is located kind of near the Night Elf starting zone and near a lot of the Night Elf zones, just right here at the very top of Kalimdor. Now I'm going to show you guys how you can unlock the Dreamwalk ability which will actually replace your teleport to Moonglade and you'll now be able to go to like a portal area and go to multiple places including Moonglade. So to do that we're gonna head back to Stormwind and go and talk to Chromie. Once you're at Chromie you're gonna want to select a timeline and we're gonna want to pick the Legion one and then it's gonna start this timeline for us and we're just gonna accept the quest to get it started. So this quest wants us to go over near the Stormwind docks to start going to the Broken Isles for the Legion expansion. And now we're at the point where I'm able to skip it because I've done it before. If you haven't, you'll have to go through it, but we're just going to go ahead and skip. It might look familiar. Now we're back at the spot where we're going to get our Dalaran Hearthstone because I haven't done that yet on our character. And this is essentially where you'll want to kind of get to. And then we're just going to kind of run around Dalaran for a bit. It's been a while since I've done this. If I remember correctly, I think eventually someone comes to talk to me. An NPC should appear that will then trigger the quest for me to get the Dreamwalk ability. So I waited a little bit and here he is. This is Archdruid Hamul Rune Totem and this is the quest that you're going to want. A summons from Moonglade. Make sure that you have room in your bag because he's trying to give you an item. We're able to use this Hearthstone to bring us to Moonglade. I think you could technically just use your own teleport to Moonglade but he gave us the quest item so we'll use that one. I obviously don't want this part to take forever in this video so I will meet you guys when I finish the quest chain but this is pretty much how you get started with it. Here we are on the other side. I'm now getting my the dreamwalk region. ability. Reference you will learn how to teleport to the Emerald Dreamway. Now that we've gone over how to get your dreamwalk ability, I'm now going to demonstrate it. So you can use this anywhere in the world to get back to the Emerald Dreamways. And I'm going to show you guys all the portals that you'll have access to as a druid. So here we are in the Emerald Dream 
way, which is literally in the Emerald Dream, basically. So if we go to our map, we can see there's all these different portals. There's seven of them all together, and they're basically places that are really strong in nature magic that the druids can go to. I'm gonna try to go over these pretty quickly, so I'm not gonna run up to each portal, but I'll just cover them really quick. The first one was Moonglade, which I already showed you guys kind of in the top of Kalimdor. The next one is Feralis, which is also in Kalimdor, and it is right here. The next portal is to Grizzly Hills, that is in Northren from the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, and it is located right here. The next portal is to the Dream Grove. This is from the Legion expansion. It is the Druid's class Order Hall. It is located in the Broken Isles in Valshara, right here at the Dream Grove. The next portal is Mount Hyjal, which is located also in Kalimdor, lots of Kalimdor places, and it is located right here. And just two portals left to go, the Hinterlands and Duskwood. I'm going to cover these two together because they're both in Eastern Kingdoms. So the Hinterlands is located right here, and Duskwood is located right here. So as you can see, Druids have a whole bunch of portals, and this is stuff that isn't open to other classes, so pretty cool stuff. The next topic I'm going to cover, I was debating putting this in the video or not, but I decided to go for it. We're going to be discussing summoning, and particularly summoning stones. So I came out front of a dungeon right now, and there is this summoning stone that you can click on and use it to summon any party or raid members. These summoning stones are outside of any dungeon or any raid in all of World of Warcraft and there's a ton of them all over the place, but they do require at least two players in order for it to work. Say hypothetically if you were going to run a dungeon with some friends and if two of your friends were already there and you weren't yet, they would be able to summon you to them, so it is technically a form of travel. And then also similar to summoning stones, warlocks actually have an ability called Ritual of Summoning, which is kind of like creating a summoning stone on demand. This also requires at least two players, so if I had someone else to click on it, it would then essentially summon a summoning stone, except like a demonic version of a summoning stone, and then you would be able to summon your party or raid members. But that's super awesome because the summoning stones are of course only located outside of dungeons and raids, but the warlock ritual of summoning you can do anywhere in the world as long as you have two people. So we are now finally on the very last thing I'm going to cover in this video, and that is guild cloaks. Starting off with the horde, there is this guild vendor located right here in Orgrimmar in the Valley of Strength. If you're in a guild that's completed some guild achievements, then this vendor will have cloaks for sale that you can use to teleport you back to Orgrimmar, and of course for the Alliance Stormwind. So I managed to get this one unlocked. It's called the Wrap of Unity, and it can teleport you to Orgrimmar with a four-hour cooldown. And then there's also two other cloaks, one that has an eight-hour cooldown. There's another one that has a two-hour cooldown. These ones, if you join a more established, super active guild, they'll probably have the achievements done, and if you join it, if they've already completed the achievement, then you will have access to buying these from the guild vendor. Basically, what this cloak is is essentially like having a second hearthstone, but it just has a longer cooldown than a hearthstone. And real quick, I just wanted to cover where the Alliance guild vendor is. It is in the trade district of Stormwind City, and my character that I'm on right now isn't even in a guild, but this is where the vendor is located if you were and if you had the cloaks unlocked. So that's all I've got for you guys today in this video about how to travel in World of Warcraft. I hope you found it helpful. I know it was a long one. If there's anything that I missed or that you're still confused about, feel free to drop a comment and I will do my best to help you out. And as always, feel free to leave a suggestion down below if you have any World of Warcraft beginner's guides you'd like me to cover in the future. Other than that, I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!